I'm Julia Listengarten. And I'm Stephen Benedetto. And this is our opportunity to talk about the book, uh, uh, Cambridge Companion to American Theater since 1945. Um, it's also a, a pleasure for us to uh, thank our contributors for their um, uh, stellar articles. Uh, Stephen, do you remember how this, this book began? Well, like all things in academe, it started at a conference. We started to hear these stories that were not necessarily about the tried and true um, figures. Um, and they were stories that weren't only talking about directors or only talking about author, uh, authors, playwrights. They were talking about the collaborative um, pushes and pulls, which made those seminal works that we all know um, live and breathe. Right. And so we started thinking about how to put together a volume of this kind that would shift our attention away from individual figures uh, in theater history to highlight collective practice and to discuss uh, a wide range of collaborative models uh, since 1945 mm -hmm. that uh, uh, emerged and, and, and evolved and shifted over a period of time and how, how these models uh, dismantle hierarchies or in some, case, some cases reinforce them uh, in, in various contexts. And that led us, if you remember, to our discussions about the structure of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, how to how to break it up, right? How do we how do we capture the work of directors, designers, directors, actors in a book when there's a limited amount of space? So that led to a formation of talking about um, the commercial and mainstream, the regional and the popular, and then subdividing those categories into um, the dominant sort of um, theater making processes at the time to try to get at. Um, a story of socioeconomic political forces on the business practices and the collaborative artistic practices that were happening um, through time since 1945 into the present. And then some of the discoveries that, that we uh, uh, had along the way uh, as, as we began to, as we began and continued to uh, collaborate with our contributors. Uh, uh, the, the fact that those, those markets, they, they're, they're fairly fluid and they uh, intersect in, in sometimes very uh, uh, unexpected, unusual ways. When we talk about a, a mutually influential relationships that existed between mainstream and experimental, for instance. And then uh, the discoveries that, that we had when we uh, realized uh, uh, that uh, those markets intersected and, and, and there's some uh, interesting moments that happened at those inter intersections. Uh, also looking at, uh, as, as we continued to discuss the fluidity of those markets, right, we began to uh, talk about the, the, the impact of economic models uh, across the markets. And this all came to a head because the project ended with, with COVID shutting down the theaters. So that was sort of jarring for almost all of our contributors. And, we were, and we, they were left with like, what do we do now? Um, those funding models worked and they were transforming. And now there's an abrupt shock to the system. Um, so we were left at a very sort of seminal moment that was that was saying, okay, we're looking back at the same time, we're about to jump forward in a very creative way. And, 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 and it, it's just a fascinating place to end because we're asking our, our, our readers to go, okay, how are we gonna take up the past given that our social, political, economic systems um, and even ways that we gather as audiences has changed? What are those potentials? What are the lessons we're going to take from history um, to move forward and make something new? 